Good evening. Welcome. Gail Williamson, daughter Jennifer here. And today is Thursday, February the 3rd in the year 2022. And we welcome you to the Focus on the Word Bible Study. And I'm going to talk to you tonight about something that's been in my spirit. So last week we talked about uh, nevertheless faith. But after talking about that last week, something that that just rose up in me was about being a settler. So let's pray and let's get started. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for those that join in, whether it's now or at a later date. But I thank you, Lord, for the technologies that govern this. Lord, I ask that you prepare the hearts and minds of everyone that joins in. And Lord, I thank you that your word will not return empty, but it will accomplish what you send it out to do. Now, I need you, Lord. We all need you, but you are the teacher and I rely on you. So I ask you to lead me and guide me. What you want me to say is what I'll say. And we'll just do what you want us to do and give you the glory now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. So <laughs> yeah, I, I need Jennifer with me because I bounce off of her. And she has a lot of wisdom. And when she's not with me, I just feel like... Okay. <laughs> Thank you for being with me, Jennifer. So I'm going to remind you of a commercial. I bet you've seen it on TV. It was on TV a, a lot a few years ago. And so what was on TV was about a... Um, um, it's a cable commercial. It's a cable TV related commercial. And so you see this neighborhood... In the modern days, modern neighborhood, urban, you know, uh, in the suburbs, single family homes. And then, uh, and you know, you see a color picture. Then it goes inside of one of the homes and everything is in black and white. And the family is Amen. living, <laughs> not quite cave. It was kind of cave. I thought they were cavemen. No, they were living like in wild, wild west days, you know. And, oh, okay. Well, that's caveman to her. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the lady had the bonnet on her head. And, you know, and they, they didn't have, you know, they just, the, the father was sitting there reading the paper. And the mother says, she says, Paul, you know, if we got this, we could get rid of these boxes. And we could get rid of these wires coming. And we could put a TV in every room. And the father says, we don't need that. We're simple people. We settle. We're settlers. We settle for the simple things in life. Hello, family. And so then it shows the daughter who's sitting at this table. And she says, that's right. That's why we have these drab clothes. Then they show the son. And he, he lifts his head up. He says, that's why I got this, this home uh, homemade haircut. And then dad says, besides that, we need these wires so that cousin so-and-so can have his privacy. <laughs> and so then he pulls back this curtain and his cousin, whatever, sitting in the tub. And he says, I need my privacy. And they close it back up. And so the, uh, the concept was, don't be a settler. Come over to this service, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since I saw that commercial, God been speaking to me uh, for many years now about being a settler because this first came out around 2015 and they did a number of commercials on it. Mm -hmm. And so tonight's story uh, topic is don't be a settler because sometimes you can get to a certain place and just say, okay, I'm going to make I'm going to make do right here. And this will work. It's too hard to go forward. It's too hard to believe God. But God doesn't want you to settle. He's got so much more. If you get up and don't settle, 
you could get so much more. And the more is going to impact not just you, but your family. So here I am in 2022 with my daughter sitting here with me. But there wasn't always a time she would have been sitting here with me. And if I had settled back then and just felt like I just need to get her through high school and I need her to be 18 so I'm no longer responsible. I know some of y'all have thought of that all over there. I know you have. But you know what? Don't be a settler. So let's talk about some things. So uh, we're going to talk about the life of Abraham first. Mm. And so I want you to go to, let's do the Acts first, Jennifer. So we're going to go to Acts chapter 7. And in Acts chapter 7, we're going to read verses 1 through 6. And then after Acts chapter 7, at some point, we're going to go over to Genesis chapter 11. So, uh, so Acts chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. Jennifer generally, she's going to read from the New Living Translation. And I've got the King James. I may interject some things. Oh. Uh, Interject. Yes. I know. I just I have to say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, so Acts chapter 7, verse 1. Then the high priest asked Stephen, Are these accusations true? This was Stephen's reply. Brothers and fathers, listen to me. Our glorious God appeared to our ancestors Abraham in Mesopotamia. Potamia. Uh-huh. I'm <laughs> Before he settled in Haran. Before he what? He settled in Haran. Key oh. word there. Key word. So the New Living Translation says before he settled in uh in Haran. Mm -hmm. The the King James says before he dwelt in Haran. Hello, everybody joining in. All right. So that's verse two. Um God told him. Leave your native land and your relatives and come into the land that I, have, I will show you. So Abraham left the land of the Ch Chaldeans and uh -huh. lived in Haran until his father died. Then God brought him here to the land where you live now. But God gave him no inheritance here, not even one square foot of land. God did promise, however, that eventually the whole land will belong to Abraham and his descendants. Even, even though he had no children yet. Six, God also told him that his descendants would, be in, would live in a foreign land where they would be oppressed as slaves for 400 years. So we see uh, Stephen, this is before Stephen was stoned to death. Mm -hmm. uh, the high priest, there were some accusations made. Uh, Paul was one of the accusers, accusing Stephen of being, you know, uh, I, I You'll have to go back and read it. Yeah, because go, yeah, yeah, go back to chapter six. But Stephen, in his defense, starts talking about uh, the glory of God appeared to Abra Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Haran. Now, the King James says dwelt and the New Living Translation and possibly others said before he settled. Now, let's go over to uh, Genesis chapter 11, and let's take a look at that settling. Because, you know, we are simple people, Paul. You know, that's why we wear these drab clothes. And, you know, cousin needs his privacy. We simple. We settle. Mm. Settling will get you out of God's will. And you know what? I'm sorry. I want to say this, too. But God, it said um, God appeared to Abraham before he settled. See, before you can think you want to settle here and think this is good enough, God's going to say, who you think you are, that I don't have more for you here. Then you, you think this is good? Wait till you get beyond there. You, that's why he's going to stop you before you think you can settle. Yeah. See, you want to settle. He think you <laughs> think you're going to settle. But God said... Wait a minute. Who, who Jennifer? You, you, them you, back there, you, all of them. You, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, you think you want to settle, 
before he said, uh, hold on. He had to stop your brakes because you was Gary Parker. He had to stop. He said, hold on. No, hold on. Reverse that. Because you, look, you can't settle here. You can't settle here. He was like, nope, nope. Put it out apart. Pull it out apart. Let's go. He was like, but it's good. And listen, you think this is great? Do you not see the riches? Do you know what lies before this? And the word tells us that eye has not seen nor ear has heard what's laid up for you. God doesn't have to give you a preview of what he's going to do. It is our benefit. It is just his grace and mercy that he even lets you in on the fact that I'm going to bless you, child, if you would do this. Don't settle on your journey. Don't get complacent. Think that you're there. To settle is to fix it, resolve it, to take up residence. Mm -hmm. It means you think you have arrived and you know what? I like it right here. We're going to stop right here and let's put up a house right here and let's build some over here. Let's do a park. No, he's like, don't settle, don't settle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one thing about stuff that settles is it's it's, thinking. What? You read my paper. No, I didn't. But everybody knows like, <laughs> the, it's, it's, you know, what, what the saying is, all the good rises to the top. Yeah. And when people settle, they start sinking. You get embedded. You start rooting yourself down into it. And then it becomes hard to get you out. That That's actually one of my notes. So, oh, yes. Sorry. That's all right. That's perfect because, right. because that's just a preview of where we're going. Right. So, basically, everybody don't settle. And really, all of this, what we've been saying for three weeks, we say cast, you know, launch into the deep. Nevertheless, faith and don't settle. So God will always encounter you and say, wait a minute. Do you trust me? Cash your net, cash your cares on me. Launch out because I'm about to take you somewhere. Have faith. Don't you can't see where it looks like, but have faith and don't settle here. Because what you're like, we can't, this is not our permanent home. Do you realize this? This is she not just, our permanent home. She got all kinds of I'm scriptures. That are, no, I love it. It's nothing but the spirit. But this is not our permanent home. And everybody think, oh, do you think this is the this is heaven here on earth? This ain't nothing compared with heaven God. This ain't nothing compared with what God has laid up for us. And if you think this is what you see right now, it's the best. The best is yet, yet to, to come. come. Hmm. 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 I'm sick and tired of us settling. We are not settlers living in today's world and settling for, for less than what the best is. You know, that commercial I, I told you, they were living in the modern with modern conveniences and they are settling. We're just a simple people, he said. We settle. We're settlers, mom. We need the simple thing. Well, you could go for simple, but God can keep it simple and give you the greatness. Woo! The best is yet to come. Your eye hasn't seen. Your ear hasn't heard. And if God said he's doing a new thing, I keep telling you this. Isn't new mean, new means you don't know about it. He says, shall you not know it? You don't know the new thing because it is new. Mm -hmm. It's never been this way before. You got to be open to God doing it his way. Just all he needs you to do is to get up and to go. Mm -hmm. And he told uh, 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 back in Acts, he said, I got to go back there for a minute. Okay. You can stay where you are, Jennifer, and then I'll read. Uh, it said in, in 7, Acts chapter 7, verse 2 said, and he said, men, brethren, and fellow fathers, hearken. This is Stephen talking. The, go- the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia okay. before he dwelt in Haran. All right. So keep that in your mind. The New Living Translation says before he settled in Haran. So he had some instructions to do. 
And what were the instructions in verse 3? Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land which I shall show thee. Where are we going? Don't worry. Get up and go and I'll show you. Verse 4. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into his land, this land wherein you now dwell. Who removed him? God told him, get up. All right. Now let's go over to Genesis chapter 11. And we're going to read from, um, we're going to read uh, chapter 11 verses 27 through 32. And we're, and we're going to go over to Genesis 12. And read uh, verses 1 through 7. So Genesis chapter 11. Starting in verse uh, 27. Through the, the rest of that chapter. Oh she's typing it out. Yeah. You got it out. You got it in there. Okay. Alright. 27. Okay. Genesis 11, 27. Okay. This is the account of Tara's family. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran was the father of Lot. But Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, the land of his birth, while his father, Terah, was still living. So get the picture now. So Terah, prior to this, we get the breakdown of who begat who. You know, the, the lineage after uh, Abel and this person begot this person and begot this. And then it, it gets to Terah and we stop and we go take a closer look because God is introducing us now to Abraham and the story of Abraham. So we zoom in from a high altitude. We get a close up of Abraham's family. His father's name is Terah. It's him. Nahor, Nahor, Nahor and Haran. And uh Haran was the father of Lot. And Haran was the father of Lot. Now Haran died. Mm -hmm. So uh the first usually when you see them listed that way, then they're listed in order with with uh Abraham being the oldest, and Nahor is probably the second, and Haran is probably the third son he had. So Lot's father Haran died, but he died while they were still in Ur of the Chaldees. Now, um, that is Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia also. That's known as Mesopotamia. And if you think of Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia. <laughs> so if you think about your high school ancient history, you you might remember they talked about the melting pot of civilization started in Mesopotamia. This is what they they were teaching us. So in Mesopotamia, they were idol worshippers. They made idols, uh, and Tehran probably was no different, right? So uh, then in verse twenty, we see that uh, verse twenty nine. Meanwhile, Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai. The name of Nahor's wife was Melka. Melka and her sister Ishka were daughters of Nahor's brother Aram. Wow. But I, I need a chalk to keep up with that. Okay, go ahead. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but Sarai was unable to become pregnant and had no children. So we get a little, we remember we're zooming in to understand the family makeup. Verse 31. One day Terah took his sons, Abram and his daughter-in-law, Sarai, his, his son, Abram's wife, and his grandson, Lot, and his, his son, uh, his son, Haran's child, and moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans. He was headed for the land of Canaan. But they stopped at Haran and settled there. Oh, we're simple people, Ma. Mm -hmm. That's why we wear this. That's why we, and cousin needs his privacy. We don't need Canaan. We can settle. We settlers. We can settle right here. And so if you've got the King James, it says he, they dwelt there. Mm -hmm. Verse 32. Tara, Tara lived 205 years and died while it's still in Iran. So they get up from Ur of the Chaldees. Mm -hmm. And all of them, except for Haran, who's dead, 
go with him and but they're headed notice where they're going to Canaan. they're going to Canaan but in Acts chapter 7 we saw God told told Abraham to get up and go to a land I will show you that's how Abram got to Canaan but wait I'm jumping ahead of the story mm. so uh, a little thing about uh, Tara, and that is we know later when we read about Abraham, we know that Abraham was a very, very wealthy man. We know that, uh, I just told you he was the oldest son. Uh, his father died. We see that at the end of Genesis chapter 11. He inherited uh, uh, the laws. The firstborn gets a double portion. There's also a portion held that was Haran's portion that the father had. So the father had Haran's portion because he died before the father that would go to Lot. So get a picture. This man with his two remaining sons, at least one grandson, there could be more, but they didn't tell us. We see that Abraham has a wife. And that uh, uh, Nahor has a wife. They have great possessions. They get up from Ur of the Chaldees. And they're starting on a trek to Canaan. It just tells us that in chapter 11. Now, I understand that Canaan, the land of Canaan, is about a thousand miles from where Ur, whatever that region of Ur is. Oh, you kind of misspoke. He didn't take Nahor. He took Lot. He took Lot. Sorry, and his wife. Lot and his wife. Nahor probably stayed. Maybe so. Okay. Because remember, they he took. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, Nahor yeah. And his wife. Thank Lot you, Jennifer. And his wife. Thank and you, Jennifer. You know what Nahor stayed. And Nahor probably stayed back in Ur of the Chaldees. Mm -hmm. So some of the family went with him. Now the point is, they're going. They started out to go to Canaan, which is over a thousand miles. And you got all of this great multitude. You got, you're taking all of your possessions. You got everything you own, every flock, every animal, every, you know, all your household goods, your family. They, they'd be lucky if they traveled five miles a day. And he has servants. We know this because later we read about Abraham had many, he was, he had a lot of wealth. So can you imagine, now, did God speak to Terah? Nowhere in the Bible tells us that God told Terah to move. But it did tell us in Acts chapter 7 that he told Abraham to go when he was still in Ur of the Chaldees. He also told Abraham to leave his family, leave his kinfolks and to go. Abraham, we don't know how it was that they all went. Did Abraham say, Dad, I think we should go? Did the father say, hmm, I think that's a good idea. But however it occurred, they all got up except for Nahor, uh, and they traveled, and they got to going, and they only got as far as Haran. And uh, another thing I was reading about is, Haran just so happens to be the name of the youngest brother, right? And so could it be that in their travels and they're just, they hadn't gone, I don't think Haran is that far from Ur of Chaldees. And so he got there. Could it be they looked around and said, this looks good. Look at this land. Look at the fields. Look, we have a water source. Look at what we have here. I suspect that they settled. We know that they settled. They stayed. They dwelt there. They they made it comfortable. They said, well, this is it. And they stayed right there and didn't go any further. Could it be that the place was named as they grew and got uh, pr and became more prosperous? Did he name it after his youngest son that died? We don't know. Maybe it had that name. Now, uh, let's go over to Genesis chapter 12 and let's come back and we'll talk about some things. Um, the um, chapter one, I mean, verse one, 
The Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives and your family, your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be blessed, be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So four. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all of his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into the household at Haran, and headed for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There, there he set up a camp beside the Oak of Morah. At the time, the area was inhabited by the Canaanites. And we're going to, oh, you can read chapter, verse 7. seven. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give you this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated to the Lord who had appeared to him. So Abram, God had to shake him out of his complacency. You know, sometimes, and that's the other word that's rumbling in my spirit, the complacency of saying, this is it. This is good. I did good. I did a good job. You know, okay, look at my achievements. I got here. I left. Okay, this is enough. And he had to shake him up. And it took the father's death to shake him up. Now, a few little things. Interesting thing we can find from people's names. Uh, Terror means delay. I'm going to let that marinate. His father's name, the meaning of the name is delay. Haran, the word Haran means parched, means parched. Parched. Think about that. When I think of the word parched, it makes me thirsty. It makes my mouth dry. It makes me think of dry. It's dry here. You know, it's got to be hard. So, and so, so Haran. Huh? I'm so Haran. I'm so Haran. I'm so parched. <laughs> okay, Jennifer. I like that. So, make sure on your journey that the delays might be family members. And... And they left. He started on the way. He had a partial obedience. Uh, see, when you partially obey, it doesn't stop. It doesn't remove the promise. It just puts the promise on hold. Partial obedience puts your promise on hold. It's like having a big book and you put a bookmark in it and you close the book up. The partial obedience, he got up, he left, but he didn't leave the family. He told him to leave his, his, his family, leave his father's house. He brought his father with him, right? And then it wasn't until the delay no longer existed that Abraham got, uh, heard from God again. I believe God spoke to him while he was in Ur, the Chaldees. And I also believe that God spoke to him after the death of his father and said, okay, all right, your delay is gone. Now get up. And he had to tell him in verse one of chapter 12, leave your native country. See, Haran is still in the Chaldean area. He had to say, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on the earth will be blessed through you. So let me tell you, my dear friends, this blessing is not just for you. It's for, for your family. It's for your seed after you. It's for the, the, uh, the blessing of where you're going to go. All the inhabitants of where God is taking you 
and all the inhabitants of the earth. You need to press on and don't get complacent. Don't be a settler. We are not settlers, Paul. We are not settlers. We're going to get up. We got to shake off that sleepiness. There's some, uh, uh, some scriptures about complacency. See, complacency, being a settler, puts you in a place of you're not hot and you're not cold. You're just kind of there. You're just kind of lukewarm. And you already know what the Lord said in Revelation. I'll spit you out my mouth. You're not hot. You're not cold. I'd rather you be hot. I'd rather you be cold, but this lukewarm, this, ah, I'm settling, I'm here, this is enough. That's not it. And so he will spew us out. Uh, go to uh, Proverbs. Say something. No, please, please. Um, um, okay, Lord, help me remember what you were saying. Um, What you know, it's so it's so funny when God say get up and go. You know, when He gives you the get up and go, but He tells you what's ahead of you. You know, He gives you that promise. He gave everybody a promise. You know, I promise to never leave you or forsake you. I promise to do this. He give you like God, why? Because because of this. Because mm -hmm. where I take you, nobody maybe with Nahor and something, maybe God spoke to his family. You know, and they were obedient. And then he was like, oh, let's settle. But then he was like, no, I didn't want you. And probably pushed him and said, somebody in this family got to hear. Yeah. And Abram, he said, Abram, Abram, he hears me. Yes. He said, now they settled and you, you and I, I need you to go. You know, so that. And then also be important. Be important. This is important because this is what I'm getting to. Don't complain in your journey mm -hmm. to moving. Ooh. Don't complain in your journey where you can't, you know, when he gets, don't settle. Because the people of, the people of Israel, when they came out of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, out of bondage, they were so happy. They were so excited because God has said, I'm going to take you back to the land of your forefathers. Right, right. And during the way, they were all happy until they started seeing it got hard. And who said that moving into where God is placing you, it's not going to be easy, y'all. This is not an easy road to follow. Yeah. It's, you're going to have opposition. So you're going to have um, hard times. And it's going, you're going to stumble. And you're going to look, it's going to look hard. And it's going to look this. The problem what they did was they complained. They complained on the way to settle. They complained on their way to the promise. Yes. They complain yes. all the way. And yes. you know, that's that's another thing about settling. If you settle too long, you start complaining. Oh, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer. I like that. So you here's stop. your litmus test. Here's your test. Are you complaining a lot? Maybe you're starting to settle. Hey. I mean he and they complain and complain and complain and complain and complain. They complain about the man of God. They complain about what God gave to them. They complain about all everything that God has said. And he said, you know what? I had enough. <laughs> God and, said, and I'm going to wipe them all out. Right. And I'm going to start with you, Moses. And Moses had to intercede and say, no. What will the other nations say if you do this? They'll say that you couldn't keep these great people. You couldn't do this, you know. Right. Yeah. And then they just complained to him. He said, that's enough. You can't go in, but your children's children could go in. And that's where we don't want to get to a point where God said, Okay, if you're not going to be grateful for the road, that, yeah, this is hard. I never said it was going to be easy, but you never failed. Right. And you never burned. Right. And you never wanted for nothing, asked for nothing. You never cried out for anything. You never was in pain where you was in the back. They started saying, like, they got so bad, they was like, we want the leeks and the fish and the melons. We, we, we laugh at that all the time. Leeks. <laughs> Fish and, and melons. melons. Like, Come on, it good. it's like stinky, funky stuff. But yeah, <laughs> he's like, and that's where we have to remember, like, on the way of, yeah, I need you to go this way. Yeah, it's going to be a journey, but don't complain on your journey. Don't start murmuring. Don't start complaining, and don't start criticizing what God is doing in your journey. 
He is still God and he is still on the throne. And he is, he is high and lifted up and no one can take you out of his hand. He will act and who can stop it? And so what can separate us from the love of God? Can high things, can low things, can principalities, can devils? No, the word says that nothing separates us from the love of God. And we've been telling you for the last three, this makes the third week, this is trust. This is faith. Trust him in your walk. Trust him to take care of your family. Trust him that he hears your cry. Trust him. Remember uh, uh, Dr. Clark, I love her dearly. Uh, I took classes from her at the National Bible College. College. She said, God always reveals what he wants to heal. When you discover something, when something is revealed to you, that's an area that he wants to heal in your family. Get to praying and believe God. Call in some partners to believe God with you. We are not settling. We pour it into our children. We pour it into our families. And there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And so Jesus paid, came to the world not to condemn it, but to give us everlasting life. It's not him that makes you feel guilty. It's not him that sticks his finger in your face and says, you should have been a better this or a better that. Or look how you messed up with your children or your family or your this or your that. It's he doesn't condemn what he saved. He came to save. He came to set the captives free. He didn't come to, to put a guilt trip on you. That is your enemy. That is your enemy. And so rise up from that place of complacency. Put on your everlast, uh, nevertheless faith. Uh, remember, uh, what is your test? Do you find yourself complaining a lot? Are you criticizing a lot? Then may ask God to go to God. Ask Him to forgive you, and and and, and ask Him to shake you up. Right, and fill your mouth with praise. You know what? That was in my yeah. my mind to say right. tonight. And fill your mouth with praise. Yeah, because the the enemy wants you to say everything against Him. Like, see, because that's Him in your ear. See, look how hard this is, and you move. See. Look how now you think you was going somewhere and see and see, but it's like, oh no, but my God, who but do my all God. things, I shall praise him through all. This may look bad. It may look bad, but I know where my God is taking me and he has got me no matter what. Looks. No so, Lord, matter I thank what. You no for matter everything. what. For everything. For everything. Every trial you brought me over. Every mountain. You mm -hmm. brought me over every valley you brought me through. Mm -hmm. For this, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the trials. It's the mountains. It's the valleys. It's the fire that didn't burn you. Burn you. It's the river that didn't overtake you. Right. It's the water that you didn't uh, uh, drown in. It's those things that show that I'm still with you, child, and I'm still I'm still with you. Don't settle on this journey. There's a lot hanging in it. And you know what? Uh, it was on my heart about uh, praising the Lord. Mm -hmm. And what I've been also hearing is, come magnify the, the Lord, Lord with me. So focus your, your mind on God. And then it says, let us exalt his name together. Get somebody to praise with you. Mm -hmm. Call somebody up and say, look, I just want to talk about the goodness of God. Even when you don't feel it, mm -hmm. it's not in your feelings. Because you know what? It says, let us exalt. To exalt is to enlarge. Let us magnif magnify. Uh, to, uh, uh, magnify is to enlarge. So as you enlarge God in your area, enlarge God in your mouth, you don't have time to complain. No. You don't have time to criticize. Uh, you don't have time to murmur. That's the worst one of them all, murmuring. It's talking underneath your breath. Uh, underneath your breath. You act like God can't hear you. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Uh-huh. There's nothing worse than when somebody murmurs and you hear them murmuring when they walk away. You know they're saying something, but they go, I ain't said nothing. 
And then uh, and then you feel like, you think I'm a fool? You right. think I can't hear? Right. You think I'm a big dummy? Right. This ain't no Sanford or Son. Right. right. <laughs> so. <laughs> so remember, don't magnify the Lord. Don't magnify your problems. Because then it becomes in your way. God needs to be. God is the way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So if he's that, make him bigger. Make him bigger than the situation now. Because that situation is nothing but a pen trial to him. Yeah, amen. Amen. So when he can just blow it out of the way and say anything else. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Couple scriptures then, and we're going to close. Uh, I got Proverbs 13 and 4. Uh, this is a picture of someone complacent. Uh, and I can read that, Jennifer. And you get, uh, I'm going to give Je Jennifer, get, you get Proverbs 10 and 4. Okay. So I got 13 and 4. It says, lazy people want much but get little. But those who work hard will prosper. Now, that's the New Living Translation. But it's a form of complacency to just, you know, get lazy where you are just to settle in. She's okay. got Proverbs 10 and 4. Proverbs 10 and 4. Lazy people are soon poor. Hard workers get rich. Wow. <laughs> Period. Uh huh. So you'll notice with complacency, we get the word lazy that comes up. Uh, uh, I got uh, Proverbs 1 and 32. Ooh. Ooh. I think we'll end on that one. You get one and thirty proverbs. Ooh, uh -huh. the the New Living Translation, Jennifer. Ooh. <laughs> For simpletons, that's my word. For simpletons turn away from me to death. Fools are destroyed by their own complacency. We can't get complacent. We can't be settlers we can't settle down as you settle you're going to hit the bottom right. you know when you pour stuff uh you know uh i know sometimes when i'm cooking and i'm pouring off the drippings of something then you know all this the solid stuff will settle to the b bottom and the fat and the oil will rise to the top and so the settled stuff will just get down to the bottom, it'll settle, it'll stick together, it'll become a gunk and a glue and a dredge and sludge, you know, and then it's hard to move once you've settled down, right? Mm -hmm. Don't be a settler, don't get complacent. Uh, sometimes you may have to pull out your, uh, your journal, uh, blow off the dust, and open it up and see what did God say. Right. Because also where you're going, it's not only for you, but it's for your children's children and their children's children. And then not all, all along the way through this journey, it's somebody else who we pull along. That God is like, this ain't only for you, but this is somebody who needs to see me at work. Who what? needs to see me at work. And you need to go ahead and may be the trailblazer. Be the forerunner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So they, can, so they can follow. Amen. Amen. Lot went with Abraham, with Abram. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was all right for Lot to go because Abram was under his, uh, okay. he was under his care. But uh, the delay had to pass away. And once the delay was gone, Abram was then free to move around. And do what God wanted him to do. Maybe he felt an obligation. I don't know. I don't know. But I know that Abraham, uh, Abram did what God said, ended up moving, got into a covenant with the Lord, name was changed to Abraham. And we today are, are because of Abraham and Sarah, we are now sons and daughters of Abraham and Sarah. And so because through him, God blessed the entire earth. If you need this blessing for your children and your family, make sure you're not settling. You're showing your children how to push in and how to go forward 
and how to not be, how to believe God at all costs. Oh, we love you, dear friend. Pray with us. You got anything, Jennifer, before we pray? Okay, pray with us. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time together. Lord, we thank you for your word. We know it doesn't return empty because you said it doesn't. So touch every heart, Lord. Stir every person. Lord, I ask that you uh, cause them to see areas where they become complacent and areas where stuff is starting to settle. And Lord, uh, let them use their own tests. Are they complaining? Are they criticizing? Mm -hmm. But God creating them a clean heart and renew the a right spirit with you, within each one that they would call out to you and ask for your forgiveness and then do what it is that you ask them to do. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, that's it, my dear friends. You know what time it is. So we'll say goodbye until next time.